Marcy Cook from the Vernon Parish Tourism Commission was our Love Your Parks tour guide yesterday. She took us all around Vernon Parish and Beauregard Parish because she's like, well, you got to go meet the neighbors. You can't That's just right. come to town without meeting the neighbors. <laughs> uh, both of these regions are part of Louisiana's no man's land uh, and also the myths and legends country. And let me tell you, this is really fascinating. Um, and as we went around, we learned that there really are myths and legends they that abound. Stories. They got plenty of stories. <laughs> I want you to go to their website, vernonparish.org. Uh, also, uh, again, I'm going to give out the website for No Man's Land. It's visitnomansland.com. And so, Marcy, we get to be hospitable to you. It's your turn to be <laughs> to be our guest after us being a guest here in your parish. Uh, welcome to Big Blend Radio. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for having me. And thank you so hey. much for coming around. And I've really enjoyed showing you around. And um, obviously, I would love to be able to show everybody around our area because it is you, our you know, area and we love it. Well, there's reason to love it for sure. Number one, you're also friendly <laughs> and uh, you know, really, I mean, we talked about, you know, Southern hop- hospitality. I mean, I'm just going to say there's like Louisiana hospitality. No one can touch it. It's just you have to go and experience it. Everyone's so friendly. Um, you know, it's like, it, you know, we're out here writing about your region and covering it. And people who don't know that, they're still really friendly. So it's not, you know, it's, it's real. It's very genuine here. Um, it, it's got to be really nice to live here. Everyone's so friendly. It is. It's a wonderful place to live. I wouldn't live anywhere else. And you've lived Mm -hmm. in different places, too. And uh, one thing I want to say that uh, we're in Leesville, uh, which is part of Vernon Parish, and Leesville is home to Fort Polk. And and that's a really um, important part of history, and it's a very important part of our country's history uh, then and now. Uh, So when we look at how many people live in Leesville, um, is is most of the population – from the base? Uh, no, and Fort Polk is an army post, um, so it's Fort Polk, and then it also includes JRTC, which is the Joint Readiness Training Command, uh, which is a separate but equal component uh, that is at mm-hmm. Fort Polk. And that uh, that group actually trains both our military and then other military units from around the world. Uh, mm. So there are wow. always people incoming and outgoing and um, training and then changing units every couple of months. But Fort Polk as an army post is stable and here and home to the um, 190th mountain unit, I believe the mountain unit. And so Mm. we are just, we're Mm. happy to have them here always. And we're happy that they call us home. You know, and and mm. that's the other thing. So you have a very, um, you know, it it it, it is like it, a lot of visitors coming into town all the time, and they come see you. You're, you're the first person people should come and meet when they come to town. And uh, when we met with you, you took us downtown to the historic downtown, and you still have old neon signs and these beautiful historic buildings and pocket parks. Um, it's really unique. Um, but yes. you took us into the courthouse, and that courthouse is over a hundred years old, right? It is. It's over 100 years old. It is the historic courthouse, and our offices actually are located in that courthouse. Our visitor center is the front right corner on the first floor, and we're always happy to have people stop by and visit us, and we'll give you all the information we can about our area and about the rest of the state as well. Mm. And and speaking of that, you're in what's considered, is it central Louisiana or western Louisiana when we people think about um, how easy it is to get here? Because, you know, it, aren't you just a little bit up from Lake Charles in southwest Louisiana? We are. We're up from Lake Charles. We are considered west central Louisiana. Okay, we are mm-hmm. right on the border, 20 minutes from the border of Texas and Louisiana and right in the middle of the state. You come up or down 171, and you will come through Leesville. Okay, so Leesville, everybody's got to stop here because um, you're also you're, you're a lot of people say you're gateway to uh, Toledo Bend Lake Country, um, but you're also right. uh, 
yeah, you're, you're a gateway to that, but also you're a gateway community to uh, Kisachi National Forest as well, which is where Nancy and I went today with Kim mm-hmm. Wallace, uh, who is the uh, Vernon Voyager. And, man, she likes to voyage around. She's, she's into adventures out in, in the boonies <laughs> like we are. So this was very cool. Of course, we didn't stop at one place. We had to go to other places, too, because it kind of happens that way. And it's so beautiful out there. I mean, it's just so lush and green. We went to uh, Wolf Cave, um, Wolf Rock Cave, right? Is it Wolf Cave Rock? <laughs> Where we Wolf went? Rock Cave. Uh, uh, no, Wolf Rock Cave. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it is a, a prehistoric living habitation area. It's one of the very few caves in Louisiana. And it is, it's a little tunnel of a cave you go in and you have to get down on your hands and knees and you have to travel down this long tunnel and then you finally end up in a small room but it's all underneath all the rock formation so it is a cave we let kim go in there (laughs) but it was you know there's a little creek down there so they had a water supply there was mm-hmm. shade um and then there was a lot of fungus mm-hmm. all kinds of mushrooms and things mm-hmm. and then afterwards um we want to do her interview and everyone uh we've got uh another show coming up a special show because we you know what marcy took us all around yesterday and we ended up getting so many more interviews that we were going to air today but time is time uh but we will do a special uh show just on vernon parish and beauregard parish and you're going to want to tune in because we we went to a gothic jail where hangings took place in there you know all kinds of stuff that was a cool uh, so, place. Um, <laughs> anyway so you're going to want to hear this show it is going to air on friday august 23rd at uh, 1 p.m. Central Time. And everyone, you can keep up with that at BigBlendRadio.com. You can listen to shows as they go live or anytime later on demand in all the different outlets, but it's all there on BigBlendRadio.com. Which we went to, I think it was uh, Cyprus. It was like a a pond, like Lake Cyprus, this little lake Mm -hmm. area. Uh, Really, really beautiful. And um, we were a little disappointed because we didn't get to see any alligators. You know, Priscilla, our little sock monkey, (laughs) wanted to see one. (laughs) Or or maybe we wanted to see one. Yes, Priscilla, that would have made her day. I know. Yes. I know. You well, know, everyone, Priscilla, our little sock monkey, has been having a you know way too good a time here. Um, yes, he's tired. Now. But I wanted to touch on this because Kisachi National Forest, um, you know, this is a huge forest and uh, longleaf pine, and she was showing us where uh, some of the trees are marked to you know stay away from them because they're part of a habitat, a special habitat for endangered woodpeckers, and um, it's just really, really amazing. But there were still a few wildflowers, and that's something I wanted to touch on that uh, you, your town, Leesville, or is it Vernon Parish as a whole that is the wildflower capital of Louisiana? Yes, we are. We're very proud of that. We have wildflowers all over the place. Um, the best time to see them, of course, is in the spring and in the fall. So I'm really glad you got to see some uh, because mm. right now, August, it's just really hot. <laughs> Yeah, he had just a little muggy, but you know what? It, it, there's air conditioning no. people, and there's daiquiris all throughout the state. Of <laughs> yes. Well, I will have to say that that it's. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yes, you can. Oh. But it, it's what is very nice is that for August it is not as hot as it as it has been. Okay, it's mm. it's staying under a hundred, and so that's nice. It's kind of nice yeah. out here for August. Yeah, I mean, we're we're handling it pretty well, you know. To me, it's pretty. That's it's, good. And it makes it so lush and green, and you can go out to the water areas and go take a dip. I mean, there's, you can you can stay pretty cool. Um, this area is it is just it's gorgeous, and there's so much water, you know. And I think that's something, you know, having both of us being in the desert for so long. You know, it's really nice to see this green, and the it's green is amazing. and the water is, is amazing. Um, but the, one thing I wanted to touch on is you've got the no man's land, so this neutral strip where there was no law and order um, in between the you know the, the changeover of you know America taking possession right of of Louisiana. This was after the Louisiana Purchase, right? That's right. It was for a period of about um, let me see, seventeen oh three to about 17, uh, excuse me, not 17, 17, um, 1803, sorry, okay. I'm getting all the dates confused now, 1803, the Louisiana Purchase, and then um, 
this land was just disputed territory because they couldn't decide where the border was. It wasn't really clearly marked on anything. Mm -hmm. And so it became just a kind of an area where people were not supposed to go, were not supposed to settle. It just to be a buffer for a while, while Mm. all of the governments figured out where the border really was. And it took until uh, the first treaty, the, the treaty, which was called the Ones Treaty, um, the Adams Ones. Oh yeah. Was started in 1819, and it took until 1821 to really be completely ratified by both governments. And that's why we're celebrating it in a three-year time span. It took three years to settle it. With, okay. Um, excuse me. With all of that. And and when it they took three years to sell it, there was no law and order. Nobody could tell you what to do or not right. to do, cool. um, which, you know, I, I, sorry, but I, I dig like that. Uh, but, you know, so this is going on. Um, but, you know, what I think is so great about this, I don't, you know, I, I know you guys are like three years of celebrations, but I think this has now become um, something that will be a new region, just like you have your myths and legends country, right, that no man's land now, that we yeah. are all getting it as, as visitors and locals reconnecting with their history. I think that it is this is something that doesn't go away now. No, it's not going to go away. We have found this identity, and we this whole region has become a part of itself in itself. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking so, um, of myths and legends, I wanted to touch on this because mm-hmm. you have these kiosks all over the place, even in the forest, um, you know, outside all the landmarks like the Gothic jail you took us to. Um, you have these kiosks that talk about myths and legends, you know, the Louisiana, Louisiana legend country. And next to each one is a yucca. And the yucca, you know, it's an, uh, this you know, plant is what you see in the desert. I mean, we see it everywhere, and, and it's blooming all over, actually. And we saw it inside the forest, and Nancy and I are going, what is the yucca plant doing inside Kasachi Forest? I mean, you go around the corner, and there'll be a magnolia tree in the wild, which is bizarre to us, and completely something you just, you know, normally you see them in a city, not in, in a forest. So that was really neat. And all these different oaks and, you know, pines, I mean, the diversity of trees that you have in the forest is mind-blowing. But then what is this yucca doing there? And then you said that this is one of those myths and legends of Louisiana. Yes, it is. For our area, we had, during the no man's land time period, we had bandits and, um, you know, highwaymen who would rob travelers and they would lie in wait. And John Merle was the head of one of these um, bandit gangs. And people who were friendly to him and to his gang would plant yucca close to their dwelling so that the members of the gang, if they needed to, could come to that particular dwelling and know that that person was friendly and that they would be okay and safe there. So the yucca plants meant something out at that point. And so we plant those actually beside all of our kiosks as just a reminder of one of the myths and legends from our area. Mm, I like this. I like cool. this a lot. So there's, there we go. So that's one of the myths and legends. Now, uh, something that we found out, the, the, what we did visit yesterday, some of the places we visited, they're, they're, these were not myths and legends. This was some real stuff. Um, one of them was bring up the Gothic jail and i keep wanting to say gothic church because it does look like a gothic church um (laughs) this jail is like elaborate on the outside it's beautiful it's got flowering trees and uh, the stonework and the ironwork is so beautiful it is a gothic building that people who are into architecture are going to totally want to go and see but then when you get in there you're going to get the absolute heebie-jeebie creeps and uh, you're going to hear stories that we're going to freak you out a little bit. And uh, and everyone, we're going to air an interview about that uh, coming up uh, again August 23. Uh, 23. But um, this place, I mean, this story about these two guys getting hanged in there is pretty freaky. And, and wasn't the guy that those two guys killed a taxi driver and then dumped his body in a pond, right, a fishing pond. Wasn't that in Pickering where we drove by yesterday between uh, Leesville and um, De Ritter, which is in Beauregard Parish? Yes, you did drive through Pickering and that area. So 
again, you can see how we're all interconnected. We're all related just down the road a little from each other. Right. And right. I, I don't want to tell the whole story, but you're mm-hmm. right about the the jail. It looks absolutely beautiful on the outside. Uh, truly, architecturally a gem. I mean, it's the only jail like it in the whole United States. Just one of a kind. And then yeah. you walk in, and, and it is gray concrete walls and steel bars. And, and it goes like on the inside, like being in a lighthouse. Yeah, you mm-hmm. go, and it's like that light. That's it's like a lighthouse staircase. It's Man, freaky. It goes forever. It's <laughs> freaky. And and then afterwards, you go next door to the Beauregard Tourism Commission office uh, to get information on the area, and you can see three thousand dolls, which could freak you out too if you're scared of dolls and clowns. <laughs> <laughs> They have quite a doll collection. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, they do. It, it was really unique, and it, you know, it, it's interesting because it gets into the history of De Ritter and Beauregard Parish, and I, it's got to be with Leesville too, right? About um, the lumber industry. It, it, was that the same for Leesville, where um, it was um, quite a, a yes, big it deal. was. Mm-hmm. Because the trains, when when the railroad came through. The railroad came through because of the logging industry, and it brought all that prosperity and all of that connectedness to almost every mm-hmm. town in this area along this region, that north-south yeah. north south railroad track. Mm. It's, it's amazing when you think about how everything, how, the, again, that's everybody connected, you know, and how it happens with, you know, this connectivity with this forest and the lessons learned from that. And so it was like a big company town, really, or company region coming in. It, it, I didn't realize it was like the gold rush, how the logging industry happened. Like everybody from different places of the country or world would come in to do the logging and then go to the next destination to, to strike it big in the trees. That's it. And the trees were used. I mean, everything that could possibly be used from the tree, from the beginning of the bark, all the way to the sap, all the way to the wood itself was used and made money mm. in one and, way or and another. People made, syrup. people made syrup. I thought that's cool. No. That have syrup. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know. Yes. <laughs> so the other well, and then uh, they tapped the took... trees and mm-hmm. – I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go yeah. ahead, go so ahead. They tapped the trees and got the sap, and that sap was used to make turpentine. So that was very important, one of the byproducts. Oh, yeah but very important and very much a moneymaker. Wow. And the other thing, too, is you took us downtown to uh, in De Ritter to the Beauregard Museum where we met with Ilona and uh, went through that museum, and it really gives you a story of the people of the town. Uh, everywhere we went um, is important if you're tracing your family history and your family comes from here or came through here. Uh, all the museums are really helpful in that way. Uh, but you really get an idea of what a lumber region was like when it was in you know thriving and booming you know it, it uh doing really well um so that was a really cool place to go to and everyone again will have an interview that you can listen to again on the august 23rd show but the other place that totally blew our mind was the new yano well, i'm gonna say yano right or lano, lano. new lano right. cooperative colony that was what a story of how this colony you know, this utopian society, you know, moved into town and created their own community, really. And it was on all these well, they principles. Did. Yeah, that's wild. Well, that it happened. actually started in California. It was the Llano del Rio Cooperative Colony. And um, because of water issues in California, they relocated. They found a town for sale right here called Staples. And Staples was for sale, and they bought it. And they moved here and renamed it New Yano. And that's where the New Yano Cooperative Colony came from. And they lasted okay. about 30 years. Um, they had Good. a number of members, and it was very much a, an equal colony. You bought your membership, and men and women were equal in that, um, definitely, in that they could and were expected to work outside the home. They were expected to work there in the colony. They could work outside the colony if they needed to. Um, men and women mm. had equal votes, and um, 
their children were Which taken is, care of as a group effort. This is really unique and different, especially because this was back in, what, 1915 when it started? Um, around that right, time frame, about and that didn't time it go period. for like 20 years. Yeah, it, and that's, to me, right, it think lasted about, in, with, until you know, 1937. Wow. So um, that's a it, it lasted time. quite a long time. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know, people, leadership always gets weird in some way. And the Depression <laughs> happened. But this is before World War II. And you've got to just think about That's what right. it was like. And and also, why were they seeking this utopian society? I've, I'm like, it's it's now I'm I'm going to go deep in research. I want to read those Bellamy books and see what was it that yes. made people not think that where they were living was good enough. What What was it that they weren't getting? That they seek to That's utopia. right. I mean, like this. well, it, it yeah. definitely, um, you know, it also became involved in the labor movements in this area and around the world because it was not an isolated place. Mm. They um, they traveled. People came from all over the world to visit them. Some came to become members of the colony. Um, so it, mm. it was very much a universal type of colony, very yeah. educated, wow. very multicultural. Yeah, very European, a lot of Europeans coming in. Nancy, I thought yes. that was mm. really fascinating, and we kept talking about Greeley, Colorado, where we've just come from, and how they try to build a utopian society too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig into all that because it's just too fascinating. Uh, you know, the other thing too is we were really interested in your parks in Leesville, and you said what you have eleven parks here. That's right. We have wow. and, right, I, and so some of them are very small, like a pocket park, and others are quite large. There are in neighborhoods all over town. Hmm. The one, and they have books. You have these this free book library thing. These little boxes that people can, yes, you know, we open have a little window nooks. and yeah, book nooks. Yeah, right. We have book nooks. Really yes, and they are basically you um, take a book, you leave a book. And so you can go there at any time. There will be books in any of the book nooks, and it's a variety. And because they are free and it is just um, – it can be just about anything from a textbook to a paperback to a children's book of some kind. And we just mm -hmm. ask that you – if you take one, either leave one or bring one back and leave mm -hmm. it so that somebody else can have a chance to read I love that. I think that needs to be That's across cool. the country. I've seen it in some yeah. places. Mm -hmm. Tucson, where we live, they Tucson had them in parks, there, yeah. especially in the children's parks. You know, anywhere where there's family, they, yes. they tended to do that too, which is really good. Because sometimes families don't have a book. You know, they don't have the resources. Right. They don't know what's going on with libraries too. Um, the other thing too is, yeah, don't throw books away. Um, we stopped at the Museum of West Louisiana and had all these buildings. And that's something I, we already have a list, Marcy, for when we come back because we're already planning our next. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and that's on the list. Well, we'll be that's happy to list. take you uh, to all the places we missed this time. <laughs> I know we we did a drive by. You know we do the drive bys. That, hey, we were there, right. but we want to go in those buildings. Uh, this is amazing, so you can go in and see. It's it, it's like a train depot there too, isn't it? Where we were. It is a train <laughs> depot. It's it's a KCS train depot, and actually the. The one in DeRitter, I believe, is a KCS train depot mm -hmm. because, you know, the train, uh, the tracks were built by KCS, and the trains that still run it are powered by KCS. And that's Kansas right. City. So, uh, right, Kansas City K Railroad. Okay. KCS. And then the other, yeah, and then also, um, so we went to oh, that museum. Uh, but sorry, we KCS, back, we, Kansas we, City Southern. <laughs> oh, there we go, KCS, Kansas City Southern. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then... Uh, the other thing is folk, uh, Port, uh, Fort Polk, um, that's a museum. You have a museum for that, too, so we have to do that next time because uh, right. we want to learn more right. about so the, the history of yeah, the Army Post. But this Fort Polk and I know some other areas um, like Alexandria where we're talking about that was really a, a big deal in the, what's called the Louisiana Maneuvers, right? And that was, that was part of World War II. Am I getting that right? Yes, World War II and pre-World War II because, uh, you know, basically the military knew that um, we needed to be ready for World War II. We knew that action was coming, or the military did. So they planned and held 
what's called the Louisiana Maneuvers training war games in this mm. area, all here in western, west central Louisiana. And some of it went north towards Shreveport. Some of it went over into Texas. And so there would be um, armies and groups of mm. soldiers trooping all over this area and trying to capture the enemy soldiers, the enemy army. Hmm. Wow. This and is, so that was we're, the we're weekend do... maneuvers. So it, it happened. Mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to have to get Mike Wardy, our, my, our military yeah, historian, on, on a show with us to talk about it. I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I need to – and because uh, he – uh, one of his books is about uh, Donald D. Uh, Blackburn, which is it's really fascinating about this general. And uh, Mike covers, you know, he comes on our shows all the time, and he's sent us out that wherever we go, we need to see if his generals that he's written about um, have been in certain places. And Fort Polk is on the list. And um, when you look at Donald D., uh, yeah, it is Donald D. Blackburn um, that – was here and stationed here at some point. So I'm going to have to ask him about that and see if we can get him on a show to to talk about that in in particular because uh, Donald D. Blackburn uh, was definitely an interesting man. He was known as the Shadow Commander. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see what he did here because it might have been in those. I'll have to look him up too. I know. This is like. He may (laughs) have been. I mean, lots of people were. Yeah. And out at Fort Polk, they do have a museum, um, and so it is open to the public. It's sometimes you do have to stop at the gate. You have to sign in and let them know where you're going. But mm-hmm. the museum, excuse me, the museum is open daily except for federal holidays. And mm-hmm. so all it takes is a phone call, and you can check out the telephone number for that on our website. Okay, and everybody again, that's Vernon Parish. Dot org, right? Is that the right website? Right. It's actually um, LouisianaLegendCountry.com. You can find it that way oh. as well. Oh, okay, great. No, that's Louisiana good. LouisianaLegendCountry.com. LegendCountry.com. Yeah. Dot com. Okay. Okay, and then um, let's see. I do want to touch on the food because this is important. Now, Nancy okay. and I went and had a really good dinner. Mm-hmm. We we pigged out because it was a long day. We did a lot of we did a lot of walking around. We walked at the art park. We can't yes. leave out the art park. Yeah, that was that cool. was amazing. It's a beautiful park. It's a walking park and uh, with sculptures and the sculptures all have meanings behind them and are connected to the people of the town. Um, beautiful flowers and Nancy got to play the xylophone and the musical part of it. So that was really I cool. I also got to see the the mud bugs. Well, yeah, what's up with the mud bugs? You got to you got to bring up the mud bugs. These little towers. <laughs> oh, these good. little towers. towers. Yeah, these are mud bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these are mud bugs. These, this is basically a type of crawfish that, and you know, because there's a lot of water here in Louisiana, and you go a few inches down and you can uh, touch water in a lot of places. It gets kind of muddy. So um, the mud bugs basically build little towers to keep out the liquid and to keep other things from getting to them. And so when you're walking around, you will find little mud towers. Cool. And it's mud bugs. Oh it's crawfish. I see. I I dig this now. You know that's that <laughs> is something that you don't see everywhere for no, sure. That's cool. For sure. And then the other thing too is uh, the food. Uh, we went to Wagon Master Steakhouse and picked out. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, we had great oh, margaritas good. and uh, we had we had we tried their fried pickles because we have a fried pickle thing with another travel writer. Every time we have fried pickles, we have to. You know, gloat and and boast that na 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 we had them and you didn't. <laughs> so we had to do that uh, oh, just to, to brag. Well, we want all of our travel writer friends to come here and see how cool it is and what they're missing. Oh, they're missing wonderful! Out, you know, so we'll do whatever we can. We're gonna like, hey, you, you know, you've got to come eat this. Uh, great burgers and. Um, but the thing I wanted to touch on is that you are creating, you're in the midst of doing this, a gas station mm-hmm. food trail. And everyone, don't, don't, I know you're making faces out there, but if you haven't had gas station food in uh, in Louisiana, you're missing out. Because this is good down-home food, a lot of good fried food, like these potato tots things that are like, oh, loaded, loaded oh, oh, <laughs> potato pies, oh, oh. Oh, yes, oh. Natchitoches meat pies, uh, boudin, um, mm-hmm. sausage, of one, lots of different kinds of sausage, um, definitely homemade fried pies and things like that. Um, 
And wow. then let's, okay. we need to talk about the lunches and the dinner plates, the lunch plates especially, because a lot of mm. these places are little mom and pop kind of places, and so they know how to cook. So that's mm. where you get meatloaf and two vegetables and a roll and dessert or chicken spaghetti or black-eyed peas and cornbread and cabbage Ooh. and or red beans and rice with sausage and a big chunk Ooh. of cornbread Ooh. <laughs> and things okay. like that. You know, just, fried chicken. Well, you don't, know what don't we're doing ever after forget this. the fried chicken. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. If I had chicken okay. here, it was good. I mean, mm. that's it. Now I'm like, okay. Everything is good here. We we need. We should have had lunch before we did the show. This I is know, bad. Now, now we're going to be hungry all day. <laughs> like, you know, but well, that's, it's okay. There's a gas station across the street. <laughs> See, this is the cool thing. There you go. Uh, you know, that's it. It's That's it. Well, thank you so much, Marcy. Uh, thank you for taking us around and showing off your area, uh, not only Vernon Parish and Leesville, but also Beauregard Parish. Uh, everyone, again, August 23rd, we're going to have a special show in both parishes. And uh, I encourage you to go to no, visit nomansland.com. And that will link you through to all the there different events and get you that history as well. And then or vernonparish.org or Louisiana, LouisianaLegendCountry.com. Is that the other one? That's it. Okay. That's go it. check that well, out. Well, thank you so uh, very much. We appreciate your coming. It was a pleasure to have you here. We hope you come back. Oh, it's Now on that you've been here, yeah, you're a friend, and we want you to come visit again. And next <laughs> time we're going kayaking, Marcy. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Anytime we can get on the water, I'm ready. Okay, oh, we're right. doing it. Next time we're cool. we're kayaking for sure. And I want to find those alligators because Priscilla, you know, Priscilla, the little sock monkey, she needs to say hi to a gator, and I know she'll be safe in the kayak. It'll be good. It'll be good. All right, well, you take care, and we'll, okay. we'll stay in touch. Thanks so much. Thank you, Marcy. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.